Okay, Graham. Now, to, this is actually a kiln. It's small. Yeah, it's 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 only a, a half a meter by half a meter uh, drop, but it's big enough to fire what I need to fire in it. Her name's Phoenix, and oh, you uh, name you named your kiln. Yeah, Phoenix. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is you'll see in the cement here somewhere. It's scratched in Phoenix mm. Studio here. Mm, mm. Yeah, Phoenix. Oh, there I see you it. Go. I see it. Yeah. Phoenix Studios. Okay, yeah. that's what you named your studio here. Yeah, this is But it. your studio doesn't... Because, because I'm going to rise from the ashes. <laughs> like but your studio it. doesn't just have the kiln. Artist. What else? Keep, keep on going. You, well, you, I mean, he has a, uh, this is a shelf of all you'll need to get to stuff like mm -hmm. um, for all the ceramic uh, chemicals and oxides and mm -hmm. glazes. Mm -hmm. And this houses a whole lot of practical stuff that one uses in sculpture. Mm -hmm. And then there's... That's all the rough stuff from you know that one uses, and that's clay. So it's I don't, all the, I don't want to be facetious, you know, but is this your thinking chair here, your thinking stool? Yes, it's my uh, it's my when I my it's my resting stool. So when I stop work, I sit down on this one. Uh -huh. He has my he has my at work resting stool, but this is just <laughs> waiting for that to happen. So oh, when, is, when that now when you say that, what is so that? So this stool is actually functions because I will put this out there. And the wait, 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 wait. This, this being the anvil. This is the forge area with the anvil, yeah. Mm, 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 mm. So you can forge things. Things are, he has a forge thing. Mm. There's an axe head. Oh, yeah. That's forged. It's made by bending flat bar together and then hitting it flat. Mm -hmm, so mm. it's a sandwich. So you do all that work. You're a muscle man. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess this injury I got from my knife. Uh, uh, is me to slow it down because this is the hammer, uh, the hammer hand. Uh, so I think it's to push me here more where this is where I'm at now it's my second one in every weekend I just started last weekend I made that one and this weekend I made this one so I thought I'll just make a sculpture a weekend I'll be, uh, the phoenix shall rise mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he has those cactus forms that I was talking to you about mm -hmm. So that's where the iconography comes from. So it's all actually internal. Now, uh, well, hold now this, this looks like what we call very autochthonous African or very autochthonous West African or very autochthonous uh, Nigerian. Where do you get your inspiration from? Igbo uh, masks and Yoruba masks. Those are my favorites. Mm -hmm. I love the Dogon masks too. Mm -hmm. Dogon masks are more geometric. Um, and then also the Abel and also Zahirin masks and Congo masks. Mm -hmm. um, basically all the masks of Africa. But this, you're quite right, this is very West African, uh, Côte d'Ivoire mm -hmm. style. But the, yeah, the, the idea is, is ancestral marks and the hairdo and whatever on it is this normally an animal symbol of the Orisha. And it, I've, I've got two masks in my, my lounge. You must film them. You'll see where it comes from. Mm. Because I'm actually working in an African sculptural language. And I'm, my model are those two masks. Which yeah, are no, both male and female. No, I have to. Well, let, let's, let's, let's go back yeah. over here for just a second. Now, you said that you... you oh, man, I like this. What's this Mr. G there? <laughs> Mr. Graham, what's that? What's the Mr. Uh, G? That's, that's, that's my uh, welding mask. Ah. And that's the old welding mask that broke. And I've got a new one that's photo light sensitive. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. What do you mean photo light sensitive? What does that mean? Uh, I'm not a sculptor. I got to know these. Well, when, when you strike the welding thing, it sparks. So you mm -hmm. need a, a visor with a filter. Mm -hmm. And that one's set. You 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 got to fit close it very fast. Whereas the photo sensitive one, as you don't have to work this mechanism as, uh, mm -hmm. manually, mm -hmm. you just you just hold your mask, and as you touch. The, the screen goes dark. Oh, I got you. Mm. Okay. Yes, the oh, first this one. one. So, this one's a female. Now, I must, I must say this, you know, because, you know, people are, are going to accuse you of being, what, what, what do they say, appropriate? What, what are they? What are exactly. I told you earlier. I said, uh, I said, you know, I know people are going to accuse me of being a white male appropriator. But, I mean, actually, I might be a white male, but I'm not an appropriator. I'm... Um, I'm actually uh, just uh, copying work, yeah, copying mm. the work to understand it, mm. and um, I'm enjoying it very much. Oh, wait, wait, go back to that. Natural. To understand it, tell me about that. When you say to understand it, what do you mean? There we go. You can see. Mm -hmm. What do you mean to understand it? Tell me about that. Well, it's the language of the form that's being used to create either 
a uh, a, a very sim geometrically simplified uh, um, human form, and the, what's on top is the world of the the, the spiritual ancestral spiritual mm. realm, the spiritual mm. realm. So what's on top is the spiritual realm, and it's connecting it to the community. So the mask becomes a generalized simplified object. Well, person, image, God, deity, icon mm. for the community. It doesn't look like anybody, but it looks like the, the, everyone. Mm. And so this is the modem, mm. if you want to understand in internet terms, this is the modem to that transmits this knowledge through the, the body of the dancer oh, okay. to the people. Okay. And that is what I'm talking about, trying to understand it. Mm. So I'm not from a tribe in Africa or anything, um, or Ashanti or whatever. I'm just uh, looking at the form and playing with it because I understand it, that this area is a liminal space of energy and creativity. It's the, it's the vitality that flows through light, through into the, the world. Would, would, it's the sun and the moon and the weather uh, and everything. Okay. Would, would, would it's the whole be... connection to the world. And this has always been judged as being a, 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 a primitive thing. It's actually not. It's actually a holistic approach to connecting to the world around you, mm. nature, to be sensitive and not to destroy it. Mm. Because if we destroy our natural environment, we destroy ourselves. Mm. And that's mm. what's happening to the world with climate change. Mm. So in terms of climate change, this is a very powerful warrior sculpture that's f quite formal. But I'm going to make a whole series of new sculptures that are not going to have this obvious... Um, well, the thing is, when you take the human face and you geometrize the features, it looks like an African mask from mm. Yoruba or Nigeria or Igbo, you know, mm. Dogon. Mm. So, but the forms here I'm using are cactus forms, and they're going to come out this way as well. Mm. I just have to make them in stages because my next m mission is to get them upright on their necks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, there's this one's neck. And that one is a bigger one. That's well, the you, neck. To the and then they go into 3D. Now that, then once you've mounted that, it's like you put your dish on. Mm -hmm. And then you extend into space. So mm -hmm. I'm going to extend into space quite mold, quite, quite hectically mm -hmm. uh, to create energy and movement. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see you. And then I'm going to paint them in bright, bright colors. Of course. Bright colors. Mm, mm, mm. So you even have this little thingy here, that, uh, whatever the, this thing is. Here. You've got everything in your little workshop here. I've got everything I need as a sculptor mm. and as a human being. Mm. Um, how, how long have you been sculpting? Well, since I started taking sculpture when I was at university, at art school. Mm. So I guess I was sculpting from 98, probably from 1982. Mm -hmm. Full time from 1983 because that's when I took sculpture. What did you do before that? I mean, aside from being a student, what, 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 what's, your through, a, what's your through I was line? In high school. Yeah, what's your through line? What were you doing in high school? I was a boarding school kid at high school. Mm. My parents were, my father, they were always somewhere else on the mines. My father was a miner and they moved around like that. Because in mining you got sent to, mm. if you wanted to, if you wanted to do, you, uh, go up in the world, then you had to be prepared to leave the community and get uh, mm. Mm. sent somewhere else. So we were very diasporic over the whole of South Africa. I've lived everywhere. Mm. Up there in Gazankul, at Sanin, uh, Sabi Sabi, um, uh, uh, the Vol Triangle there area. Um, all the mines in up on the reef. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, my great grandfather, the St. Cliff mine, so lived on Coltonville, all over. Anyway, mm -hmm. and um, ended up on asbestos mine in, in Kuchasbrug. Ooh, in, that must in, have been very. In, in the northeastern <laughs> eastern Cape, in the heart of the Karoo land and Greek communities, mm -hmm. on the banks of the Orange River. Mm -hmm. My mother died from asbestosis, mm -hmm. and my brothers actually got um, thymia. Um, you know, to me, um, it's a lease, it's, it's, a, uh, uh, it's a cancer that comes from asbestos mm. infection in your tissue of your lungs. Mm. And so, yeah, and so the cactus mm. issues, well, there, were, there was a lot of cactuses there. Mm. So, yeah. Well, this is all from your childhood, but this is your through line. But this look, is the through line, yeah, you know, just so people can understand what mm. I'm going to do mm. next. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> because if I had to jump to what I've got in my head, what I'm going to do next, mm -hmm. everyone said, well, how did he get there? Mm. So this is academic, because mm. mm. I'm also 
an academic when it comes to art because I'm an art theory fundi. Yeah, you know. mm, mm. that's my bag. Okay, well, Graham, look, I don't oh, want well, to. There you uh, go. You're, 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 the studio and my aesthetic in a nutshell. This is a. This is a. a Dead dog. Yes, it's a. It's a I'm memorial a Molly, Molly piece. For oh, my, really? Yeah. Well, I was just saying. It's that. for my wife's dog Zebedee. Uh, no, sorry, Diego, who died recently. He was a fox terrier. Mm. Okay, so I'm sorry to hear that. We got a new one, um, Mungo. Mm. Mungo's very friendly, but uh, yeah, this dog was really cute. Mm. He's buried in the garden, so mm. I'm firing this, and it's going to. I'm making a, a tombstone, and I put it there, so mm. like a little monument, you know. Okay, well, I don't. Want, mm. Well, maybe we'll, we'll, it was a monument, so we'll end on a hopeful note. <laughs> thank you so very much for this. Monument. For this, thank you so very much for this. Phoenix Studios. Yeah. Now, Graham, what's your G R? What's a G? What's your name there? G R. What, what's your name? G-R-A-E-M-E. No, I mean, what's this, dude? What's these, what's these, G-R-G? What is this under the 2009? No, it's G-H-G. Oh, G-H-G. What, no, what does that stand stuff. for? It's Graham Henry Drummond. Okay. That's my name. There you go.